Good afternoon, follow your brushers. This is Pam from rainy Georgia. It's a rainy day in Georgia. Follow your brush, Pam Tuggle, watercolor explorist and adventurer. I'm not a teacher, I'm not a professional. I'm on a watercolor journey just like the rest of you. And um, we're all in different processes. Today I want to talk about something that's really been on my mind. And that is the expression that I have heard so many times. Oh, you paint really well, you're so talented. I could never be an artist. I can't even draw a straight line. Have you heard that? Well, here's the good news. Artists don't draw straight lines. <laughs> Sometimes we do. If we bring out a ruler of sorts and we're trying to be precise. In my case, precision is not actually what I'm after. I enjoy mark making. And right now, because this has been on my mind because my right hand is giving me such a hard time. It's just not wanting to be very pleasant. And so my non-dominant hand is totally coming into play. And let me show you how it has just really outdone itself. I did a some marks, just I'm calling them marks. They're just mark making on the paper of some leaves in the yard just by coming across Oh yeah, look at that, it's a little shaky. But guess what? That's what that leaf like looks more like than if I were to have talent and do something more realistic. And there might be another leaf coming over like this. And that's what I did in my painting the other day. And I just did another one mark making let it scribble around fill them in with colors I did sort of a um, negative painting when I finally did all the shapes together and um, see there it's just mark making and there are many ways that you can do mark making I did read a book um, I could not find the exact book in which I read it, but he was making a wonderful statement that um, artists actually only do like maybe five different strokes. You might do a straight line. And see, that's not even straight, but that would be a great stick in the yard. A curved line or an arch. Or even a circle. It's kind of an uneven circle because my little hand. But you know what? We might have a little mushroom growing in here in the yard. This is just an imaginary photo, but I want to talk to you about mark making. The other ways we can make marks, of course, is with our brushes. And our brushes can do all kinds of things for us. This one is an Escoda Versatel. And uh, in this area, I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna wet around these marks that I've made. This is how I kind of like to do my backgrounds. I love wet on wet. I'm not gonna do this full painting today. The other day, I just literally went back in, I let it dry overnight, and then I go back in and then work some more, but I'm gonna kind of come in here in between these lines and show you one of my favorite ways to paint. And that is um, wet on wet. So I'm coming in between, dropping in some water. I'm using Arsh paper, 140 pound cold press. This is torn out of one of my um, pads. Get some water in here. Thank you for being patient with my left hand. It's like, what are you doing to me? I just always enjoyed watching. You didn't make me have to do the work. That was your right hand's job. <laughs> but I found, hey, my left hand has been paying attention. This, the pencil sketches that I did, I did with the Derwent Graphitone Water Soluble Light Wash 2B Pencil. 
so that when you do come over it with water, if you don't like pencil marks, pencil sketches in your painting, they will actually disappear. See that? I don't know if you can see that or not. But I'm gonna come in here and just drop some pigment that might be pigment in the background on the ground out in my yard. So I'm gonna come in here with some burnt sienna, which is one of my favorite, favorite colors for mixing and for doing the first wash. The colors I'm using today, I'm still playing with my Michael Harding colors. I do have gazillions of colors, you know, all types and brands, and these just happen to have been my favorite for a while. So I'm still playing with them. I've got a studio palette back here with my Michael Harding paints. So as you can see, I'm coming in with some burnt umber lightly in my first wash just to kind of give an idea of some ground cover. It doesn't have to be neat, doesn't have to be precise, which I can't do with my left hand, which is actually kind of cool for me because uh, it gives me some really nice, um, some really nice colors that I didn't anticipate. Let me come up here and do these up here as well. And as I add some other layers on this as I go, um, you see how it begins to make shapes and marks that actually kind of represent other, other leaves and things on the ground other than the ones that I sketched. So let's come in here and come this way too. Use the other side of my brush. I'd have to hold this brush a little differently with the non-dominant hand, but it works. I'm deliberately leaving white spaces because um, we'll come in with some other colors as this dries. And that'll give us a really nice pattern for my ground cover. I have a little bit more burnt sienna. I don't want to paint with you all day long, but um, I just want to talk about how you don't have to make straight lines to be an artist. That's just really not where it's at. You just kind of do what you can do, and that's it. But you see, I'm making, by leaving these white spaces, I did sketch it ahead of time, but nevertheless, you can see the little leaf shapes that are might be in the, might be left with the white paint. It's a very light cover. As that dries, then I can come back in again with another layer, which I'm gonna do with a, um, now this may sound strange, but you know, because I experiment, I don't always follow the rules. I love Potter's Pink for granulation and nature colors. It's not really an earth color. Um, the burnt sienna might be considered an earth color. Your browns might be considered a raw umber or something of that nature. Um, it might be considered an earth color. But I really enjoy Potter's Pink. I think it gives me a lovely granulation which suggests texture in the leaves or in a tree and it's not really a hot pink like an opera pink but I think it just gets a really pretty granulation color let me zoom in on that so you can see that better in fact I'm going to come in and do some more down in here and uh, just let it go now the nice thing but now not being worried about precision, is then I can just let my watercolor do what it does best and let it just play on the paper and blend on the paper. Sometimes I blend my colors in my palette, but I, I have it sitting here, but I haven't used it. And sometimes I just like to let my colors blend on the paper 
and I think that too works differently. Your colors are going to come out a little bit differently, but uh, I love the results. Okay, there's my Potter's Pink. Now look how the textures came out in that, in that Potter's Pink, especially up in here. Now as this dries, and I can go back over it some more with some other color, that's going to stay there and give me some really pretty textures as I glaze over maybe lightly with some other colors. While it's slightly damp, this is a time where I can come in with this quill and actually make some marks and I'm gonna try to get my right hand to cooperate and show you how this can work. Actually, I may still be a little bit too wet to do this. It's gonna make some marks in my paper actually a little scratch in the surface. So when I come back over this again with some other colors, these little scratches will have filled in with what I have in there already and make room for new colors too. You can see that? See how those little scratches are being indented? It's not something you may always want to do, but this is about mark making and not having to make a straight line all the time. All right, while this is drying, I am, I am going to try to just come back in here with a little bit. This is a smaller brush that I got from my bean paints. I'm going to let my right hand try again. It's not real happy with me, but I'm going to try. I'm going to come in here with some of my... Um, green gold and I'm just going to drip this in here to give a sense that there might be a leaf. Again, I'm just kind of very lightly touching this paper. A couple reasons, partially because my hand hurts, <laughs> but also I just want to give a very light wash here. And it's not about details. It's about mark making. I'm gonna come back in here with some of the moss green and give it a little more depth and texture. And see how that works. So if you have your shapes, have an idea of your shapes, you can make a shape with your with your wet brush. Can make one side darker, one side lighter. That also depends on your water ratio. We can do that on another day when maybe my hand's doing better. We can talk about water ratios. I, that's something I have been learning as I go. I want this to have a little bit of a tip on it. I'm gonna let that dry because the next layer I'm gonna come in with, I want it a little bit darker. The next one I want to come into is a, um, I have two colors here. One is raw umber. That might be a good one to come in here for some of these um, stick formations that I put in here. And yep, it's wet. And yep, it's gonna spread. And yep, that's great because I like the texture that that gives. So there we go, some little bit of raw umber on top of that potter's pink, and oh my goodness, I just love that color. And I love the raw umber as well. Come back in here and do some more, let's do a couple more little sticks where I've kind of made these marks and just kind of bring that out. A little bit too much water on that one. I'm just using a small brush and I'm just, it's hard to tell, but I'm barely, barely touching this paper. It's almost like a soft, I call it a whisper stroke. It, I just barely touch it, just a very soft, light touch. My hands do better. And I think it granulates maybe a little better and I get better textures that way. 
Let's come down where this little stick is. And you know, I don't think anybody really taught me this. I may have picked this up watching other people. Just something that I have done and then I end up enjoying it. And they say your style is doing something that you like and then just repeating it again and again. So that may be the situation. Okay. Come back in here with some more raw umber over in this area. And I am kind of following these little lines that I made with my my little coil pen. We're going to go over some white area that hasn't been touched just yet, and that's okay too. But definitely not straight lines. And if you look outside, uh, I'm not sure you're going to see a, lot, a whole lot of straight lines in your yard either. Um, even the sticks, we might think they're straight, but they're probably really not. Because everything has, seems like everything has movement. So that gives you an idea how I do my sticks. I'm not going to add it to these because I like the texture that that Potter's Pink has with that. I am going to come back and do some of these other leaves before I leave you. And I'm going to come in here with some... Time I'm coming in with two colors and sometimes I do that on my brush I know that may sound crazy but this is Earth of Cyprus and then I also dipped it into my Quinn Gold yes I dip the same brush into the same color into two different colors Earth of Cyprus and In gold two colors to play together on my brush I kind of like that let me add some water and just soften these edges a little bit but you can really see the queen gold wants to play and shine and do what it does I love queen gold this happens to be um, Michael Harding paints, but I love Quinn Gold in any, any company. Any company. I like that. I'm going to do just a couple more, and then I'm going to let you go. Let's do this one down here. I'm going to do another Earth of Cypress. Actually, I might need a little larger brush. Let me wet it a little bit, because this has not been wet at all. So there you go, here's some mark making. I do have some suggested shapes that I do with my pencil. And I do have some suggested shapes that I do with my water. But you know, they don't have to be straight. Here's my Earth of Cyprus. I love that color. Um, that's the official color. I, I call it chocolate. <laughs> it's just what it reminds me of. So whenever I dip into it, I say, I'm going to dip into my chocolate. So I like that. And I'm leaving some white spots. Got a couple more to do here really quickly. And so I'm going to come into some rose matter and give some of that color as well. More rose matter. Yep, pink gardens, pink flowers, pink leaves, pink background. That's for me. Some more rose matter here. I also have some other forest colors that I could add on top of this. Um, and I might do that just now, just to introduce you to them. They're called, um, one is called, if I can find it. <sighs> well, I guess I don't have it on this palette. All right, well, then I'm going to come back in with some 
burnt sienna then. I'm just going to drop that in. It's in my other palette in the other room. I'm just going to drop some of this in. But see, you don't really have to be so concerned about details. You don't have to have every little leaf color, every little pattern. You can wing it, so to speak. Just come in here. And in my case, with my hand as it is right now, it's just going to do what it wants to do. And that is definitely not going to be a straight line. But look what it can do. And I like that. I really do. I like the way that just comes out, brings in some shapes. I could actually work on this for a long time, adding more color, adding more shapes. Um, I'm just really getting a really pretty result, I think. Put some more green gold in here. So that's just what I wanted to share this afternoon. I don't want to make it super long. I probably have gone too long already. But um, enjoy your painting and, and just don't be afraid to play. Just play. Uh, let it do what it wants to do. Be bold. Come in here and just play and experiment. That's how I learn what I like to do and what I what works and what doesn't work and if it doesn't work well then don't do it again or try something a different a little different manner I'm just coming in here with some uh going back over it with some light washes and it just love what it does I just I just love what it's doing you come back in after it's a little bit dry and just add a little bit of texture, some color. The gold is a great, Quinn gold is a great color and, and the burnt sienna. And it just makes a lovely forest floor. I've got to come in one more time and touch up this moss green because it needs something. So let's just come in and touch up over what I already did and give this leaf some texture. the moss green and I'm going to give it a little bit of green gold here too just give it some texture so that's where I'm playing today I just wanted to let you know you do not oh my goodness did I do all of that off camera if I did I'll have to do this all again <laughs> you do not have to be able to draw a straight line in order to paint thanks for watching bye